Welcome back to The Daily Poem here on the Close Reads Podcast Network. I'm David Kern. Today's poem is by Julia Ward Howe. Now, this week I'm choosing poems, well, other than yesterday's guest spot, I'm choosing poems by opening up Harold Bloom's collection that he edited, The Best Poems of the English Language. I'm opening it up at random, and I'm reading what I come to. Today, I opened it up to this poem. It is by Julia Ward Howe, as I said, and it's called The Battle Hymn of the Republic. You probably know this as a song, and it did become a song, but it was not originally a song. So I'm going to read the poem, and I'm not, I'm not going to sing it. I'm going to actually read it, and then I'm going to share a few comments with you that Harold Bloom had about this poem in the collection, uh, and then I'll read it one more time. So here it is, Julia Ward Howe's Battle Hymn of the Republic. Mine eyes have seen the glory of the coming of the Lord. He is trampling out the vintage where the grapes of wrath are stored. He hath loosed the fateful lightning of his terrible swift sword. His truth is marching on. I have seen him in the watchfires of a hundred circling camps. They have builded him an altar in the evening dews and damps. I can read his righteous sentence by the dimming and flaring lamps. His day is marching on. I have read a fiery gospel, writ in burnished rows of steel. As ye deal with my contemners, so with you my grace shall deal. Let the hero born of woman crush the serpent with his heel, since God is marching on. He has sounded forth the trumpet that shall never call retreat. He is sifting out the hearts of men before his judgment seat. Oh, be swift, my soul, to answer him. Be jubilant, my feet. Our God is marching on. In the beauty of the lilies, Christ was born across the sea with a glory in his bosom that transfigures you and me. As he died to make men holy, let us die to make men free while God is marching on. So I was thinking it's kind of, you know, there's nothing, there's no patriotic holidays going on right now. I could have read it on the 4th of July, I suppose. And of course, you'll hear this in churches sometimes uh, as well. Um, But I'm reading it purely because uh, the... uh, poetry podcast fates has spoken. But I did want to share with you the comments that Harold Bloom had about this poem. He writes, quote, The battle at him of the Republic was the all but official anthem of the Northern Army in the Civil War. Sung to the same tune and in alternation with John Brown's body, it inspired the ultimate, overwhelming Union victory over the outnumbered South. Quite aside from this, it is a superb poem, a popular creation equal to all but a few contemporaries Walt Whitman and Emily Dickinson among the exceptions. Born into a wealthy New York City banking family, Julia Ward married Samuel Gridley Howe and joined him in the abolitionist cause. They moved to Boston and became the center of its anti-slavery movement. Julia Ward Howe's poetry is copious, but ignites only in the Battle Hymn, published in the Atlantic Monthly in April 1862 and immediately taken up by the Northern forces in public. In her later years, she became prominent in feminism, world peace movements, and prison reform, spending her last 30 or so years on those endeavors, end quote. When I read this poem, I wonder if Julia Ward Howe intended for it to be a song, because it has that um, that help, that cadence to it. Um, th- this is, of course, an era when there were many hymns were being written, in it, and, and you wonder if she's imitating the great hymn writers in writing this poem. Of course, it was published as a poem in the Atlantic Monthly, and then taken up as a song. But I, I wonder if, if she intended for it to be a song, or hoped that it might be a song, or if she sang it herself, you know, as she was writing it, because it does have that cadence and that, that pace to it, the sing-songiness, one might say. You know, there is a very specific structure to it. You know, you got lines ending with stored and sword, camps, damps, lamps, deal, heel, retreat, seat, see, me, free, and so forth. And then, of course, every line ends with is marching on. His truth is marching on. His day is marching on. Since God is marching on. Our God is marching on. While God is marching on. So you, you definitely get some thematic repetitions within, within the formal structure that she's playing with um, or that she's, that she's employing. And then, of course, that formal structure also is what makes it a song. Um, there, are, there are these markers that, that notate verses for you. And you can see that she has a, a lot of skill here, you know, um, and then that she's 
read the Bible, certainly there's a lot of scriptural references over and over again. Um, but there's also just some, some great images, uh, loosing the fateful lightning of the terrible swift sword. You know, that could be straight out of the Iliad. The watchfires of a hundred circling camps. Again, that could be the Iliad. Sounding forth the trumpet that shall never call retreat. Again, it could be the Iliad, right? Um, sifting out the hearts of men before his judgment seat. That sounds like it could be the Iliad of the Odyssey, you know, the, the relationship between the gods and the, and the, and the men in that book. Uh, but then, you know, the last bit, the last stanza to me does not sound as much like the Iliad. In the beauty of the lilies, Christ was born across the sea with a glory in his bosom that transfigures you and me. And that does seem uniquely uh, part of the Christian tradition, as if throughout the first uh, four stanzas, she's calling to mind the, the ancient tradition. And then in the fifth stanza, she is um, offering something that seems very uniquely Christian, um, which of course, uh, then and now, uh, w- certainly um, emphasizes the abolitionist cause in any unique way, in a powerful way. So one more time, here's Julia Ward Howe's The Battle Hymn of the Republic. Mine eyes have seen the glory of the coming of the Lord. He is trampling out the vintage where the grapes of wrath are stored. He hath loosed the fateful lightning of his terrible swift sword. His truth is marching on. I have seen him in the watchfires of a hundred circling camps. They have builded him an altar in the evening dews and damps. I can read his righteous sentence by the dim and flaring lamps. His day is marching on. I have read a fiery gospel, writ in burnished rows of steel. As ye deal with my contemners, so with you my grace shall deal. Let the hero born of woman crush the serpent with his heel, since God is marching on. He has sounded forth the trumpet that shall never call retreat. He is sifting out the hearts of men before his judgment seat. Oh, be swift, my soul, to answer him. Be jubilant, my feet. Our God is marching on. In the beauty of the lilies, Christ was born across the sea with a glory in his bosom that transfigures you and me. As he died to make men holy, let us die to make men free, while God is marching on. This has been The Daily Poem. Thanks so much for listening. Be back on Monday with another poem for you.